Some assembly required four. All right, so we've seen this kind of thing before. We have this website, we can view the source code. It's gonna give us this JavaScript. This JavaScript gives us a link to a web assembly. So we could do Wabbit and we could um, you know, try to reverse engineer it. We're gonna do something a little different. So first we would need to wget uh, this file, oops, wget and then the name of the file there. All right, so now we have that. We can use the decompiler. We can look at this. Looks like the copy is no longer different. We've got this horrible long check flag thing. Like I said, we could reverse engineer that. I don't feel like doing it, so I'm not going to. What I'm instead going to do is use wasm to watt, and then we can get this in this sort of functional syntax. This functional syntax allows us to run this thing directly from Python. We can run this thing directly from Python using WASM time. That's where, that's where we're going to end up. We're going to end up using this in Python with WASM time. Because what we can notice is when we go in here, we do a break at the string compare. So the string compare happens late in this check flag. So it's like taking our input, mangled it, and then it calls string compare. And we're comparing strings at offset 1072 and 1024. And we see that here, that's the flag, it's at 1024. 1072 is where our input gets mangled. So when we submit here, and I've set this breakpoint at the string compare, we can go look at the memory. There's the 1024, that's what we're trying to match. 1072 is what we have passed in. See that null byte there, because my string I passed in was a lot shorter. And because I have that Pico CTF squiggle, the beginning matches. So 24, 106, 124. 24, 106, 124. And the first eight characters should match. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to that 55. And then it's 77, nine here, 70, 91. And when you play with this a bit, you'll see that changing one character here, so to change that A to a B, actually changes two different values. So that 24106, so we see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 7810 happen, and if I change this to like a C, that's 7810 becomes 7911. So it's changing like two characters at a time. So what we're going to rely on is the fact that is really doing this pair by pair. And I'm gonna brute force pairs 
of characters. And that's what I have going on in this Python file. So if I import wasm time loader, I can just load that wat file and I can just import it with a single line. So I import assembly4.wat as if it were a Python file. So the wasm loader lets me import assembly4. I'm going to use string, I'm going to use iter tools. Initializing the flag, I'm just going to copy this flag string and the flag that we figured out so far into the memory beginning at 1072. And I can access that memory directly. I know 1072 is where I copy in. I could also use the copy car method that they've provided, uh, but I just could slam it into memory. So I slam my flag and I overwrite the portion that I figured out so far. And I'm also going to take in a pair of characters that I'm going to be trying. And I'm going to put them at the appropriate place. So 1072 is the beginning of the string 8 for Pico CTF open squiggle. And then we put in the length so far, flag so far its length, and then we're adding this pair at the end. I've got a method there. I use this for debugging to print out the, the test flag. I don't need it anymore. Count and match basically counts how many characters between the string at 1024 and the string at 1072 match, and it returns that. The valid characters that I'm going to allow to be in the flag are lowercase letters, underscore, digits, closing curly brace, and a null byte for the end of the string. I'm going to guess that there may be up to 48 more characters after the Pico CTF squiggle. I then iterate over all possible pairs of flag characters. I stick them in as the flag. I check the flag. I count how many places match. And if I'm at least 10 more than flag so far, so that would be Pico CTF plus a pair, and I add these two characters to the flag so far, I print what I've seen. I break out of this loop which means I'll sort of start over again, iterating over all possible pairs. And that's all we have. So you'll see it adds pairs of characters at a time until it gets the entire flag. And here we have Pico CTF and this long string, and that is our flag for this challenge. So again, I basically brute force starting here, a pair of characters at a time, by directly calling the WebAssembly using this WASM time library that I pip installed on my Ubuntu machine.